AM 560, The Answer. Welcome back to Get Down to Business. Uh, you can get on my website, shalomkline.com, and download podcasts from this past six plus years of the show. That means that we've had a number of fantastic uh, guests and tips and advice on the program. And uh, tips and advice, that's what my next guest is all about. I'm thrilled to be joined by Susan Ivitz, um, who is the human uh, behavior hacker. And uh, Susan, that is, a, uh, that is quite, the, uh, quite the intro, and it's exactly who you are. You are, um, you are all about learning a superpower, about being able to read people like a book. And I know you've taught this in many, many companies. Susan, I love to get to know the person behind the microphone. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you very much for having me in your shows and congratulations for more than six years on air. I always say I'm a behavior hacker. Some people have computers, I have humans. Why? Because I'm a fixer. You have a problem, I have the solution. And the solution we draw in based on body language, micro expressions, statement analysis, forensic analysis, personality types, and face reading. So I can know about you by a picture, by an email, by a text message, or simply by listening and conversation. Uh, it's incredible. And you know, when folks see your bio, which of course will share your website and everything, um, they will be overwhelmed by the, uh, by the amount of education that you have had. And that's, uh, you have been programmed, I guess, to, uh, to, <laughs> to provide uh, so many amazing tools that are applicable in so many different uh, sort of scenarios. Uh, you have a lot of classes. You talk about uh, how these skills are used in the job search, how things like this are used in public speaking and so on. So let's talk about some of the examples. I know you've, you've worked with, you've trained many companies that our listeners know about. Tell us what you talk about. I don't want you to share all the tips or all of the secrets over here, but what? how can people read somebody else? Well, I'm going to give you an example because I think that is a, bit, a better way to understand what I do because um, I, it's not a lot of people who does all the channels. You have people who does body language and micro expression, but I haven't met anyone who does all the channels together. So you are a manager and we, you have been taught that the golden rule is you need to talk to others how, they, how you want to be talked to. What is the problem there? You have a team of 15 there are 15 people who have different personality types. You have introverts and extroverts is how they recoup energy. You have people who's visual. You have people who intake information different ways. You have people who process information in a different way. So people, I know it's a phrase that everybody says, but nobody leave a company. They leave a bad manager. So as your responsibility as a manager is to learn how to read your people if I'm talking with somebody who is visual and process information in facts and data, I cannot tell them a story. Why? Because that person is not going to do the job and the way they need it. Because at the end of the day, I talk, but the other people didn't receive the information and wanted to make sure they leave in the meeting with. So that's what is so important to read your people, not to manipulate, is to have a better communication. Information is data, data is power the power to become humans again, because at the end of the day, we are humans treating other humans, and we wanted to make sure that is the best way possible. So Susan, um, you are an instructor. Um, you are obviously working with companies, but you actually have the Human Behavior Hacker School. And what I found fascinating uh, as I went through your website is you, uh, you, you have a webinar, for example, how to hook a shark, profiles of the Shark Tank cast because you have analyzed the sharks and you have, uh, you have looked at uh, their profile, their personality. But I, I actually want to use a different example, which is uh, the power face reading of the candidates for the 2020 presidential election. Can you sort of give us the, the very, very brief version of, of as, you've, as you teach these classes, what are some of the things that you've noticed between President Trump and, and Vice President Joe Biden? Well, first of all, I want to say something never was done before. I invited another profiler from Europe and we did this, the webinar together. Believe it or not, when you see a face, people tend to see different things. 
And when you're a profiler, when you're a face reader, you start to see, you start to see common, de- de- common denominations on the face. For example, both process information slow, like they need the information need to make sense in their head. Both have small and thin lips, meaning they don't talk about feelings. They don't talk about things personal. Both have two lines that we call it the Twitter at three o'clock in the morning. Because Biden does, doesn't send the tweets, doesn't mean it's not checking the phone at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, both have low proxemic, meaning that they, they are impatient with people. Both have a high level of salt criticism. Donald Trump have a bigger line of criticism. That's the, the reason he's flipping every time that somebody talked to him. He felt that everything is a personal attack because he doesn't have any diplomatic muscle in his body. He doesn't have any diplomatic. We can see the face. We can see the ears. The ears is when you see when a person is diplomatic. In case Biden is more trained diplomatic. Who actually, if you start looking at their story, is because Biden coming from a political story and Trump does, uh, is coming from um, the, the business side when is what I'm saying is my way or the highway. So I see, I would say that they have the same thing. They don't talk about feelings. Uh, they're both at tweeters. Uh, they're both really impatient and they don't like to be criticized. And both when they give you feedback, I don't want to be the person in front of because they're going to say it as they mean it. They don't have filters. So maybe they do have filters in front of the people, but people inside the campaign, they're not having a good time working with them. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, you heard it here on Get Down to Business, the uh, the analysis of the face reading of the, our candidates in the 2020 presidential election. Very, very interesting. And, and Susan, you offer a lot of free classes, um, including the ones that we men- just mentioned about Shark Tank. All of our listeners are all fascinated and big fans of Shark Tank being entrepreneurs. So a lot of those classes in the Human Behavior Hacker School are free of charge. Um, I want to sort of shift to the other side of, of business for a moment. And right now there's, uh, I think as we come out of coronavirus, there will be a lot of hiring um, that is going to take place. I think everybody's going to start to rebuild. A lot of places were uh, uh, were forced to uh, put people on furlough. And I think some of those folks will be rehired. Um, there's, I think, going to be a lot of interviewing being done through Zoom and things like that. Um, a, is it possible to read somebody through video um, on Zoom or Microsoft Teams or one of those other platforms? And what tips do you have for an employer or even for a job seeker in face reading and body reading of the person on the other side? Since it's a lot of information, I'm going to try to deliver in bullet point. A, is more important the content. Second of all, is the audio. Third is the context, what the other person is watching behind you. And, um, um, and four is the ambience. Why is important the context? Is what you're saying. If the audio is bad, it's going to be annoying in my head. And I want, I want to stop the interview or I want to stop talking to you as soon as we start. So if you need to invest in anything, do it in a microphone. Make sure that what happened on the back is not dirty clothing, your bed undone. Try to use a Y wall. If you're using service like Zoom, you can do your own background for free. We teach to do that in our webinars. So you have a professional uh, scenario. For example, the logo of the company that you're interviewing with and your name on the screen. So the person is going to remember all the time by seeing you all this information. Camera need to be in a 90 degree angle. You need to use natural light whether you have the window in front of you, no one back of you, because you become a shadow and nobody can see your expressions. And really, really important, talk to your hands. If I'm talking to you, but I don't see your hands, we have this paleo brain, and I'm sorry, going to the nerdy side, where it has to do with communication and trust. So if I don't see your hands, if you don't quantify things with your fingers, I think something is wrong. So the camera needs to be two fingers on top of your head, need to stop in your um, umbilical cord, and you need to have a little wiggle so when you're moving your hands, you're not getting outside the spoke of the camera or spoke of the, of the, of the, 
of the computer. And another thing, if I can see your face, I can see your hands in the upper part of your body, I can be reading you. What is driving me crazy about videos and I cannot see your feet because yeah. you can lie with your face, with your body, but your feet never lie about it. And that is well, what is so driving me crazy. We're going to have to leave it there. We're going to have to leave it there because I want to make sure uh, folks can get on your website. Um, what is that site so people can learn more? We have humanbehaviorlab.com. This is a consulting company. And we have Human Behavior Hacker School. It's the first e-learning specialized in human behavior around the world. So it's a lot of freaky, funny things. And amazing, amazing resources. Humanbehaviorlab.com. Susan Ebbets, um, you are uh, an amazing, amazing resource. I hope all of our listeners can check that. Thanks for joining me on the air. We'll be right back. We always hear that Alexa.